a marketplace activity is brilliant for revision or it's brilliant for disseminating large amounts of information to students or perhaps uh, giving six different opinions or viewpoints on a single issue. I would divide the class into groups of about four or five and these would be my research groups and each group would have stimulus material or would be told to go away and study particular bits of information. After the research groups had been given sort of sufficient time to do what they need to do then I would break them up into what we call conference groups. The conference group should contain one member of each of the research groups and then I would give them sufficient time to either prepare a resource or even have another just another discussion or prepare a poster or something that makes them assimilate all the information, it makes them discuss what they've learnt and it lets them transfer information between themselves. I think it's good to have images um, to stimulate their discussion. It's good to have uh, props or practical work if it's relevant to it at all. Um, and I think they should use all of those things because, you know, learners are multi-sensory students and multi-sensory learners. It's not just all about reading and discussing. It can be visual and it can be hands-on as well at the same time. I would run the marketplace activity for a full hour. Um, I would make sure that the students had enough time to do their research stage and the conference stage, but then crucially allow them the time to make their product or role play or, you know, short piece of film or poster whatever they wish to make. The thing that I, that I think about that, that really distinguishes the marketplace activity is that the learning is, is deep. It's not surface learning, it's not just learning facts, it's, you know, it's, it's the assimilation of facts between students and it's the transfer and then it's using that to do something else. So it's sort of almost, it's much deeper than it is just to talking about it and me giving them information and them looking at the information again before their exams. As a teacher, you don't really have to do anything. You prepare it well, you choose your groups well, and then you can set them off. You are sort of handing over the keys to the learning. You're giving them the independence to do it for themselves. And it means that they kind of, through discussion with other people and through these other specialists, it might modify or change what they had thought before. And hearing that from another student is much more profound than hearing it from a teacher saying, sorry, what you've learned isn't strictly true, because they will ultimately listen to their peers more than they will listen to a teacher. And students are their own harshest critics as well.